let me ask you ask you first the approach to the end of this of this week what are your thoughts on the the current state of of the war in ukraine as you see it well there's a lot of there's a lot more of this um, awful campaign to play out at the moment john because the depth of, of both uh, russian commitment to it and russian capacity to continue to make a, a you know a, a really grind try and grind down the ukrainian people remains immense on an operational level undoubtedly the ukrainians have work wonders to stabilize the front and absolutely thwart the intentions of Russia to join up with the Crimea and across to Moldova. And at the tactical level, I think their tails are up at the moment. Um, but uh, there, there will be issues over equipment. There will be issues about resupply of ammunition, uh, particularly the precision artillery that's made so much impact. Um, so I fear this has got quite a long way to go through a very cold and rather grim winter. Yeah, I mean, it's, you'd never quite know what to make of Vladimir Putin's latest pronouncements, but this week there he was saying Russia isn't mad, wasn't going to go suddenly launching nuclear weapons, but then, of course, left that idea in the in the air. You wonder what, what, what he's playing at at any, any given moment. Well, this is the dangerous thing, John. Even at the height of the Cold War, we had lines of communication to the hierarchy of the Politburo. Um, there were ways in which you could get on a hotline and just say, what are we looking at? And we all really want to de-escalate this. It's such a one-man show in many ways um, in uh, Russia that we are very, very, uh, in, in, you know, just, just I won't say the mercy, but dependent on the mood swings of, of Putin. Um, what is interesting is he's now going back to uh, the, the rationale for invading Ukraine as a straight land grab. Um, the early stuff about Nazis and uh, Ukrainian threat to invade Russia appeared to be absolutely di di ditched. Uh, and he's now back in the sort of Peter the Great, Catherine the Great, um, Russian expansionism under the czars. So um, it's, it, it, it does vary from week to week, to week as the narrative is adjusted, I suppose, for a domestic audience as much as it is for an international one. Yeah, whatever he may say, it's, it's not quite like dealing with a, a, a purely rational adversary. And now, now there's talks of, uh, of Russian athletes being, being prevented from competing at the Paris Olympics in 2024. I mean, it's, it's not a strictly military question, but these things do side, sort of interlink. I wonder what the Russian view is or the, or the Kremlin's view is of a question such as that. Well, I think that the, I think we've got to recognise that many Russians are still very firmly behind uh, Putin. Um, a bit like the Nazis before the Second World War, there's been an awful lot of indoctrination. Uh, and, um, you know, for many Russians, this, uh, you know, the current failure in Ukraine uh, and some of the, uh, you know, the other implications that have come out of the uh, invasion uh, just confirm a a deep sense of grievance, humiliation, and, and anger with the West. So certain elements are going to double down on, on this is just another, another you know, episode of Western, Western arrogance with, uh, with the great Russian people. Others will recognise it for what it is, you know, more confirmation that Russia is becoming a pariah state, really. Yes. And what's your, as you weigh up the, the state of each side's capacity, to, to launch its, uh, its, its, its munitions at the, at the other. Where do you think we, we are? We've now seen the, the release by America in exchange for a, a sports star of a famous, a world-famous arms dealer. Now, that's seen and described by some as being to the advantage of the Kremlin. They need people like this, this notorious arms dealer, because their weapons are running short. I wonder how serious you think that is for Russia? I, I think it is. I mean, I, I have my own views about... Um, you know, the use of hostages basically as, as, as collateral. We've seen it with Iran. Uh, China does it. Russia does it. It's, it's a ghastly thing. And I, while I get the humanitarian instincts of Biden and, uh, and the US, I, 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 I really don't like the idea of, 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 of trading deeply unpleasant people like Boat who could contribute to the Russian war effort, uh, even on humanitarian grounds. Um, I really think it's going to be interesting how Western solidarity holds up through a a, 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 a long, cold, potentially winter, uh, when the economic results of um, sanctions coming back, uh, you know, the implications coming back onto Western societies begin to bite, uh, and how long we can keep political support and therefore public support uh, for continuing to assist the Ukrainians in, in seeing off Russian aggression. Yes. So yeah. at the moment, that, that, that has always been the hope of Putin from the, be from the beginning, that the West would prove to to crumble, frankly, uh, in its in solidarity in the face of the implications of the cutting off of uh, of sanctions, the cutting off of uh, supplies, both grain and, and and energy. 
And if that were to happen, I wonder how it happens, because we saw the French president most recently, just this week, being, as it were, driven to reaffirm his, his support for leaving it to Ukraine to decide on what terms there should be talks as and when those talks ever take place. And, and, and Scholz, the leader of Germany, is in very much the same sort of position. He, one, is a, one assumes, is even keener to see talks get going. But it's very hard for one or other of, of these allies to crack when everyone else is looking. And it would look, to put it very simply, it would just look so bad. Uh, yes, it would. Um, and, you know, sometimes we talk about Western solidarity or the NATO or the EU. Uh, but you are as strong as your often weakest link. And I know, uh, you know, the Hungarian position on the price cap, which will come up within the EU, will 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 probably be a bit shaky. Will that allow them to have... Uh, I don't think they do qualified majority voting on that. Uh, they need a, a full full consensus. Um, the other one, which is a, is a fact of life, is, uh, you know, sourcing ammunition and high-tech weaponry to keep the Ukrainians in the field is, is a challenge. Um, and um, nations inevitably look to their own security uh, and wonder how much they need to empty out their, their own arsenals. Uh, and this is not stuff you can just turn on and off on a production line. Um, it is up to a point, but it, there's, there's, a, there's a lead time. Yes. So quite a lot comes in. And the, as we say, Russian history proves how uh, resilient that society can be for the long for the long haul. Yes, but it's yes. it a stage where historically we've seen it be quite fragile when it reaches a certain tipping point. Well, meanwhile, it's got Western leaders thinking about their own supply of military military uh, of munitions and and ordnance and how it were it to come, God forbid, to some sort of major conflict where the question becomes live and and, and relevant. Could NATO countries sustain a conflict for any any significant length of time? Well, this is the reality of logistics, John. It's a very dull part of military capability, but it's absolutely critical. You know, tanks and guns are, are frankly just, you know, bits of metal unless they can be uh, re resupplied with oil lubricants, uh, you know, food for the crew, obviously crew itself and, and, and ammunition. And as I say, these we've allowed our stocks to, to be depleted over the last years out of a sort of, you know, hope. Uh, that the global you know, trends would, would negate the requirement for com large conventional forces. Uh, I, although the reality is, of course, in Europe, that uh, the Russian army has taken such a kicking in many ways that its capacity to even open another front in Ukraine, down in Kherson or around Odessa, let, let alone its, any desire to take on NATO, attack on one and attack on all, has got to be, has got to be limited by, uh, by their losses in the Ukraine.